Hi, this is Sean. Welcome to Guitar Reference Guy. In today's lesson, I'm going to be taking you through the classic Take the A Train. This is hands down one of the greatest standards ever written. Top five standards to learn for sure. Everything about this tune is cool. The melody, chords, it's just a super hip classic song that is a must know. It was written in 1939 by Billy Strayhorn. It was made famous by the great Duke Ellington and his orchestra. It actually became his theme song. A couple things about this tune before we get started. It's in the key of C major. Pretty much stays in key. The only thing you kind of have to worry about is that secondary dominant chord with the sharp 11 in it, but that's pretty easy to navigate. I'm going to show you how to get through that when we get to the improv section. It's a 32 bar AABA form. It's running at about 167 beats per minute. It's got a medium swing feel, and those are the specs of the song. Today I'm going to be teaching you everything that you need to know to play this tune. If you were to go to a jam session or you were to play with somebody, I'm going to take you through the intro, I'm going to take you through the head, I'm going to take you through the tag. I'm going to teach you how to comp through the song, and I'm also going to show you how to improvise playing over this tune. We're going to learn how to use the modes. We're going to learn how to navigate that, that sharp 11 I talked about. I created a PDF uh, for this lesson. There's a lot of content in here, so if you pick it up, it'll be a lot easier to follow the lesson. I also created a jam track for you to practice with. If you purchase the PDF, when you download it, the jam track will download also for free. You just click the link below. That'll take you to my website. That's where you can get that. If you like what you see in this video, please subscribe, click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my videos that come up. We have a lot to do, so let's jump in, and thanks so much for visiting me at guitarreferenceguide.com. Let's do it. We're going to start with the head and the chords. I'm going to do it at the same time, that way you can see how they relate to one another. So we're going to start with the opening line, the intro. I'm going to play it and then break it down. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to play everything with a metronome at a really slow tempo so you can hear the timing. Line number one comes in on the end of one. One, two, three, four, one. High E string, I'm playing on the 12th fret of the high E string. I'm placing my finger on the 10th fret and the 8th fret. I'm going to pluck this note and I'm going to pull off and then slide. So I'm pulling off. 12, 10, 8, 6. And those are trip that's I'm gonna start and then it's gonna the last little bit's a triplet, 16th triplet. And then right after that note, I'm gonna be hitting this note, the uh, the A flat. One more time, here we go. And then the second time, I'm gonna hit the A flat twice. Now, the chords that go along with that. Here I'm going to be playing a C with a G in the bass, just like your D triad. It is essentially a D shaped triad, but this is a C with a G in the bass. The timing's going to follow that line. So I'm going to pluck these three notes at the same time, and then I'm going to slide up to this chord, which is going to be A flat 7 sharp 5 with a G flat in the bass. And for this chord I'm playing, so here I'm playing 12th fret, 12, 13, and, and 12 on the G, the B, and the high E. And here 
from playing the fourth fret of the D, playing the fifth fret of the G, fifth fret of the B, and fourth fret of the high E. So, so far we have for the chords. One, two, three, four, one. kick into the head and that's going to be the intro now for the head I'm going to start by playing through it and then breaking it down one more time here we go and that's going to be my first phrase so I'm here I'm playing the fifth fret of the D string and I'm gonna be counting a full measure and then an eighth note. One, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the B, fifth fret on the D, fifth fret on the G, uh, and then 6th fret on the D. And there I'm ending on that A flat. Now, for the for that very first part, the chords are going to be C major 7. And here I'm playing uh, the 3rd fret uh, on the A, 5th fret on the D, 4th fret on the G, 5th fret on the B. So over the first phrase, I have my C major 7. And then when it gets to the 6th fret here, I'm playing my D9 sharp 11. And that chord's going to be 5th fret on the D, 5th fret on the G, 5th fret on the B, 4th fret on the high E. And that's my sharp 11. This note right here. So here I'm playing my 1, flat 7, 9, and sharp 11. So now... Uh, the chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Melody. One, two, three, four, one. And then we're going to be in the next part of it. One more time. A little quicker. Now the next phrase is going to go like this. We're going to start with the second fret and then we're going to play this line. One, two, three, four. So here, this is getting a full four beats. One, two, three, four, then a series of eighth notes. One and two and straight chromatic line uh, ascending three and four and one and two three four. So here we're playing a second fret on the G, third fret on G, fourth fret on the G, straight chromatic line, fifth fret on the B. Skip a string, go to the fifth fret of the D. Now I'm doing another chromatic line descending. Five, four, three on the D string. Moving over to the C sharp, sixth fret of the G string. Moving back to the C note, fifth fret of the G string. And then ending on the second fret of the D string. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And one and two, three, four. One, two three for the chords for that section. Now here I have a D minor seven, but if this is too much of a stretch, you can also just play these three notes and those would be your guide tones and that would totally work fine. My one, my flat three, and my flat seven. Fifth fret, third fret, and fifth fret. So here we have one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to a G seven. One, two, three, Four, and then I'm resolving back to my C major 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then back to the 2, 5. 1, 2, 
three, four. So here I have my two chord, which is my D minor seven. Full measure, one, two, three, four, to my G7 chord. Now, if this chord is too difficult, you can also just play the guide tones here, which is one, flat seven, three. If you just play those three notes, that'll also work fine. Put your ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string, which is the third fret of the B, and there's your G7 chord. So one more time, my two chord, my D minor seven, for a whole measure, one, two, three, four, G7, one, two, three, four. To my C major seven, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that brings us back to the top of the A section. Now for the B section. I'm gonna play it and then break it down. be my first four bars. So I'm going to play 2nd fret, 5th fret on the G, 5th fret on the B, 3rd fret on the D, which is my F note, 2nd fret on the G, 5th fret on the G, 5th fret on the B, ending on my A note, 2nd fret on the G. 1 and 2, 3, 4, 1 and 2, 3, 4, 1 and 2, 3, 4, 1, two, three, four chords. Uh, here we're going to have an F major seven. This voicing is just like the C major seven, but the eighth fret, so I'm playing, uh, here I'm playing the eighth fret on the A, tenth fret on the D, ninth fret on the G, tenth fret on the B. So here I'm playing full four bars, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You could also voice it like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's another way to play the uh, F major seven. A great thing to do with this tune is to try a lot of different inversions as well. So one, two, it's so a one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, two. chord inversion. Here I'm just barring the 10th fret on the D to G to B in the high E. Ring finger on the um, 12th fret of the high E. It's another way to play a F major 7. And that would be the first four bars of the B section. Now, the second four bars is almost identical. The only difference is instead of going to F, we're going to go to an F sharp here. Second four bars of the B section sounds like this. Everything else is the same, but then the last two beats of measure four, I'm going to go to A flat. One and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, one, two, three, uh, L, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that will be the second four bars of the B section. Now the chords. We're going to start with the D9 chord, which is going to be just like a D7 chord. I have my 1, which is the 5th fret, my 3rd, which is the 4th fret of the D, flat 7, which is 5th fret of the G, and my 9, which is the E note, the 5th fret of the B string. So I'm going to do this for two measures. Chords for the second four bars of the B section. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. Now I'm going to go to a D minor 9. All I need to do is move my index finger over a half step and I have my D minor 9 for a full measure. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 2, 3, 4. D minor 9. And then now I'm going to split this measure between a G9 chord and a, a G7 flat 9. Okay, so that's going to look like this. So the G9 is going to be 5th fret of the D. We're playing um, the 4th fret of the B, which is my 3rd. Then I'm playing the 6th fret of the B, which is my flat 7. And then I'm playing the 5th fret of the high E, and that's my 9. And this is going to get two beats. One, two. Then I'm going to move to the G7 flat 9. I'm playing my thumb on the G. I'm playing my index finger on the third fret.
fret of the D string, which is my flat seven, ring finger on the third, fourth fret of the G, middle finger on the third fret of the B string, that's my fifth, and then my pinky's the flat nine, that's on the fourth fret of the high E. And that would be my chords for the second four bars. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that gives us the chords for the second half of the B section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through that whole thing with the metronome at a really slow tempo. It's normally going at 167 beats per minute. I'm going to put the metronome on 100 beats per minute. So now I'm going to play through um, the intro, the A section, and the B section at 100 beats per minute. I'm only going to play the A section uh, one time through to save time, and then we're going to move on. Here we go. little ending part we're going to be basically playing through the the last part of the a section the chromatic line now as soon as I get to the C chord I'm going to jump up to the E note so it's going to be E F F sharp G A B C those are the names of the notes Second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, second fret on the G, fourth fret on the G, fifth fret on the G. And there's our ending. And then I'm going to end it on a C6-9 chord. Here I'm playing second fret, or third fret on the A string, second fret on the D, second fret on the G, third fret on the B. Beautiful chord. And then on the other guitar, on the intro track, I'm playing C major 7 up here, which is going to be 10th fret on the D, 12th fret on the G, 12th fret on the B, 12th fret on the high E, and then I'm moving over to the 6-9 which is going to be 7th fret on the D, 7th fret on the G, 8th fret on the B and 8th fret on the high E. And that pretty much takes us through the chords and the melody for the A and the B section of the tune. Now, I put some other chord inversions on the sheet and those are going to look like this. I'm just going to comp through that and you could use the sheet, um, the PDF to look at these chords. So if I was to just comp through the A section, these new chords, D7 flat 5, D minor 7, G7 back to C major 7, D minor 7, C7. You can also play G7 flat 9, lots of times I'll do that. That'll be the 7 chord with the flat 9 in it. One more time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, sorry, uh, well. one more time. And that will be the, um, the alternate chords for the A section. Now for the improv section of the lesson, the first thing we're going to start with is just the C major scale. You have to have a really good handle on that before you do anything. So we're going to look at the C major scale in two main places. We're going to look at it here, and we're going to look at it here. Now, one of the most important things is knowing the names of the notes understanding the names of the notes as you play them. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And this is going to be very helpful because we're going to start with targeting and setting our anchors for when the chords are moving by. So the first thing we have to do is we have to say what are the chords and what is our goal here. Well, our goal is to imply the chords so to do that, we have to at least know where the root note of each chord is within that scale. Okay, so that being said, if I looked at the first note, C major chord, obviously there's my C, right? Then the next chord is going to be D9 sharp 11. There's my D note. Then I have a D minor 7. There's my D note again. There's my G note. And then there's my C note. So if I'm able to do that in real time, and around each one of those notes play a little bit, at least I'm implying the chords a little bit. So uh, I'm going to give you an example. It would sound something like this. Now I'm going to play, I, I recorded myself playing the chords, and now I'm going to play along and I'm going to do exactly what I just talked about, and I'm going to talk through it as I do it. C. Got to get to the D. There's the D. D, G, there's my C, gotta get back to C, gotta find my D now, there's the D, D, G, C, D again, G, C, D, G, C. Now that we've sorted out the basic targets, we're going to look at the second chord, our secondary dominant chord that has the major third and the sharp 11. So now when we do the targets, we're going to start with C. after the targets that are not in the key. We're going to start with the major third, then we're going to go to the sharp 11. And as you notice in the melody, the sharp 11 is right there. You can also look at that as being flat five. Here we go. So I'm going to play with the backing track and now my targets are going to be first the major third, which is my F sharp, and then it's going to be my G sharp. And you'll hear how that sounds. One, two, three, four. Target one, C. F sharp is my major third. Back to D, G, C. Now I'm going to go to the sharp 11. Last time, C, G, 
sharp. D. G. Back to my C. And that's the second part of the targeting lesson. So, second targets. We're gonna. We're moving. We moved from playing D into moving to the major third, which is the F sharp and the G sharp. So that was targeting. I like to use those as anchors, my targets. That way I'm anchoring the chord and at least I know where I'm going harmonically. In the key of C major, your two chord is typically a D minor seven chord. Okay, one chord C major seven, D minor seven. Now here, instead of playing a minor seven chord, we're playing a dominant chord, which is called a secondary dominant chord because the minor chords are your secondary chords. And then we're also adding a sharp 11 on top of that. So we have two notes that are not in key. We have our F sharp and our G sharp. So how would I navigate this scale? Well, the first step would be to figure out what scale goes with this chord. And that scale will be called the Lydian flat seven scale. It looks something like this. This is the fourth mode of the melodic minor scale, the A melodic minor scale. So since we're playing in the key of C, learning that A melodic minor scale would be key because the only difference between an A melodic minor scale and an A major scale is in an A melodic minor scale you have a minor third and other than that it's just like an A major scale. So you have your A major scale. The only difference with an A melodic minor scale is we have a minor third, not a major third. Everything else is the same. So here I'm humming along, C major. Now there's my minor third over the melodic minor scale. But there's my target. So within my A melodic minor scale, I want to be targeting that D note. And the resulting scale there is my Lydian flat seven scale, which sounds great over this chord. Listen. So if I was to play along with the track, just so you can get a feel for what it sounds like, it would do something like this. Here we go. Then I'm back. So there, when I hit that two chord, I immediately went into my melodic minor, Lydian flat seven scale, and it worked like a charm. Outlines that chord totally perfectly. Now, if I look at um, the next chord, I would just have a two, which is my D minor five, which is my G seven, D minor seven is two, G seven, five, and then back to my one. What would I play over that? Well. If I look at my C major scale and I know that and I play from D to D, that's going to give me my Dorian mode. So playing a C major scale and starting and ending on the D note. Almost like targeting, but we're just going a little further now. It's going to give you two different uh, bookmarks to start and end. There's the lower. There it is, there's my Dorian scale, D Dorian, and that's what I'm going to use for my D minor 7 chord. Now, I'm going to go to my G7 chord, same scale, just starting and ending on a G note, and that gives me my Mixolydian scale. So, so far we're really just using two scales, I have my C major scale, then I have my Malot, then I have my uh, D Lydian flat 7. Then I'm back to my C major scale, starting and ending on D. Then starting and ending on G. Then back to the C. So as you can hear from what I just did there, uh, my lines are outlining the chords. You can really hear the single note lines are implying the chords. Now I'm going to play along with the backing track and I'm going to say what I'm doing as I'm doing it. We're going to start with the C Ionian, then I'm going to go to my 
Lydian flat seven, D Lydian flat seven. Then I'm gonna go to my D Dorian. Then I'm gonna go to G Mixolydian. Then I'm gonna be back to my C Ionian. Here we go. One, two, three, four, C Ionian. Lydian flat seven. My Dorian, D Dorian, G Mixolydian. Back to my C Ionian. Do that again. Now for the B section of the tune, we're going to move up to a F major 7. So what function is that in the key of C? That would be my 4 chord. Okay, So the same rules apply. Now I'm still playing my C major scale, but now I'm going to be starting and ending on the F. And that's going to give me my Lydian mode. That's going to go for four full measures. And then it's going to come into the, the D9 chord. Now this is my dominant chord. Now for this chord, once again, for this chord I can play a standard Mixolydian scale, which is a G scale starting and ending on D, or I can still play that Lydian flat 7 scale will sound extremely hip over that, uh, over the D9. And then I have just two five back, and so it's going to do exactly what it did over the A section. So over the B section, we're going to have uh, Lydian, now I'm going to go to my Lydian flat 7 for the D9, then I'm back to 2-5 uh, for the um, D minor 7 C to C, uh, D minor 7 G to C. Now using chord tones is a really effective way, slash arpeggios, chord tones, arpeggios, essentially the same thing. Very effective way to improvise through to this tune. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is just get familiar with your C major seven arpeggio, with your D dominant seven arpeggio, your D minor seven arpeggio, your G major seven arpeggio, and then back to where we started at our, at our C. Now, the intervals that make those chords would be, for a C major seven arpeggio, you have a one, you have a three, you have a five, you have a major seven, and you have a one. Three, five, major seven, and one. Now, for my D dominant seven arpeggio, I'm gonna have a one, a three, five, flat seven, one, three, five, flat seven, and one. Okay, so now, um, when I look at this scale, I'm thinking intervals. So I'm basically relating that to this nine chord. Or, the 9 sharp 11 chord, because that's an extension chord built off of the dominant 7 chord. And now I have my D minor 7 arpeggio, 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, and 1. And then my G7, 1, major 3, 5, flat 7, 1, major 3, 5, flat seven, one, major three. And then we'd be back to where we started. Now those would be the first uh, chord tone slash arpeggios you want to get down to play through this, this tune. So I'm going to play through the backing track and then I'm just going to give you an example of using those chord tone based ideas to play over these um, changes. Here we go.
C major 7. D7, D minor 7. G, back to the C. So there, I was using my arpeggios as each of the chords were clipping by, and that is a great thing to work on. Now, the other thing that's happening is over this 9 chord, to build on top of a 7 arpeggio, uh, to add the 9, you're just adding the 2. So you would go 1, 3, 5, flat 7, 9, and then back to the 1. And that would be my 9 arpeggio. Now, the other note that we have in there is the sharp 11. So you follow the sequence. So I would have one, I would have, now the sharp 11 is the same as, as a flat five, but if you were to just cycle all the way down and then add it, um, that would work well too, but you have to think about that because look, that's your raise four, your flat five, your sharp 11. So now if I was to play through the arpeggio, I would have to add that instead of the five. So here's my one. Here's my three. Here's my sharp eleven. Here's my flat seven. Here's my nine. And here's my one. So that would sound like this. And that would that would sound like exactly like that. One, three. There's my sharp eleven. Flat seven. There's my nine. There's my one. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. Here's my one, here's my three, here's my um, sharp, uh, sharp four, uh, uh, sharp eleven, flat five, then I'm going to go to my seven, then I'm going to go to my nine, then I'm going to come back. That would sound like this. And that would outline the arpeggio for the 9 sharp 11 chord. Another thing that works really well when you're improvising is to break away from all of these things we're talking about, the scales, the arpeggios, and to try and throw in some chromatic ideas or, line, or notes that don't work in the key, and that's going to create tension. Creating chromatic lines is a great way to create some nice tension um, to then resolve and release those ideas. Now, how do you create chromatic lines? A chromatic line is when you're just playing a series of half steps all in a row. Now, if we look at the C major scale, we just take the first part of it, and instead of playing it like this, we're going to add a chromatic line in there. We're going to add a D sharp. D sharp. That's just to give you an example. But I highly recommend you, you experiment throwing chromatic lines um, in different places and hearing how they sound and basing your ideas on whether or not you like that sound or you don't like that sound. Maybe you like the sound of this note, the D sharp. Maybe you like the sound of the F sharp, um, but you're not going to know if you don't try. So experimenting with chromatic ideas on top of all the scales and arpeggios we worked on is a great idea. If I took this, this note, now all of a sudden that sounds a lot hipper than just playing the scale. Because I'm creating some tension. Um, and that's a great thing to practice. Um, after you get down your scales, your arpeggios, start throwing in some of these notes that don't work in the key, see how they sound, and you're going to essentially be uh, creating a lot more color to your playing uh, from doing that.
Tagline after solo. And then you improvise over the two. Five. Back to two, five. And you do it again. So here, you're going to do that when you're done your solo, and that's a great way to bring every back in, everybody in the band back into the fold. They're going to hear that, they're going to latch onto it, and then you'll all be back together uh, playing. So here we go, uh, third fret, fifth fret, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, uh, second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. You're just playing a C major scale. Then we do a chromatic line starting at the D note, 7th fret. Then we move over to the B note and a chromatic line from B note all the way to A flat. Straight chromatic line. Now another way you can do it, because it's moving real fast, you could it's going really fast, you could pull off. that will also work totally fine. So once again, you're going to do that when you're done your solo and you want to bring everybody back in uh, and that's a great way to do it. Now I'm just going to play over the A section utilizing all the tools that we used uh, in this improv section of the lesson. Thanks so much for checking me out at guitarreferenceguide.com and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.